An OLED is a very thin layer of an organic material. You apply a voltage over the layer and you get some light getting out. It's very lightweight. It offers the opportunities to make it on thin and flexible substrates. It's currently reasonably efficient with energy. We are still improving that. So it's only applied in very special applications. It's still fairly expensive. An OLED is a quite complicated architecture of a number of layers stacked on top of each other. Each of these layers has a certain functionality. The very basic thing is that it's actually an active light emitting layer sandwiched between two electrodes. You put a voltage across those and then you get a light emission from the active layer. The glass-based OLED production is currently still a process which is based on evaporation. So we evaporate the molecules and we let them condense on plates. That is being done for a lot of layers. So a typical OLED will consist of a minimum of six layers, but typically 10, 15, even some 20 layers on top are evaporated. And that's of course quite a difficult process because you need to do it in vacuum. It's also fairly expensive for equipment. What we at Holster are doing currently is bring it to roll-to-roll -to -roll production. We like to make it like printing a newspaper. You can do really square meters in a couple of minutes. And if you can use processes like that, we can really go in high volumes and in that way get the price down. What we are uh, working on is actually solution processing. That means you don't deposit your materials from vapors, but from liquids in which they are dissolved or dispersed. That can be done, for example, by printing by a variety of coating technologies. The big advantage of that is that it's working at atmospheric pressure, so you don't need any vacuum. It can be upscaled rather easily. It's quite easily roll-to-roll -roll compatible, so you can make big surfaces, large amounts of materials and functional devices. If you want to work not for uh, displays, uh, which need to be pixelated, but for lighting, in that case, you just want to create one surface that gives off light of a certain color and intensity. And for those, you are limited in size. At the moment, what we make is about maximum 10 by 10 centimeters. If we have a good process for making these materials by solution processing, we will also be able to get a much broader spectrum of colors than uh, is possible at the moment. Essentially, uh, the big advantage of OLED is that you can make the entire visible spectrum, uh, more or less. Your eye is most sensitive for green. So green is a color which is fairly easy to make and it appears quite bright. Or simply use white, because there's a lot of materials research on white going on. One of the most crucial questions is, uh, do you really need a flexible OLED? Making OLEDs on flexible substrates is at the moment much more complicated. Also, you pay for it in terms of performance. If you want large area, you need to accept less homogeneous light outputs. If you want a very bright OLED, then you should definitely forget uh, mechanical flexibility. If you want to have very good mechanical flexibility, you should accept lower device efficiency, lower maximum brightness and also a restricted choice of colors. If you want to have a large choice of colors, then I would recommend to go for evaporated devices on glass. If you want large volume, then I would recommend roll-to-roll -roll solution process devices. Some companies with glass-based OLEDs are getting quite high lumen output now. People say, now we are going into the field of general lighting, where you really need a high lumen output. So you see it slowly coming for the glass-based OLEDs, and in a couple of years that will also be for the flexible OLEDs, because that's where all the roadmaps are heading for.